gentleman. I beg, make you not leave me, make I talk, put a girl. Why? I said they talk to you so. I neck and Mr. President Baba Bola Ametunubu, the seat where they are to sit down right now, don't they hurt? The response where Peter will be give them for inside court, maybe not in 10 years coming, I neck not go fit defend them. I not want to talk. I want to make you observe this video by yourself. As court, they make blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, fill up. The final address of P2B and Labour Party to INEC is here. It is a long read, a total of 42 pages. Let's start with the three major things they want the court to determine. Remember that Tinubu's legal team are mostly defending disqualification issues, certificate forgery, forfeiture of $460,000 being proceeds of narcotics trafficking, Shetima's double nomination and others, while INEC are defending mostly the non-compliance and the results that they announced. So now let's get down to business. The Labour Party legal team wants the presidential election petition tribunal judges to determine whether Tinubu and Shetima are qualified to contest the presidential election by reason of the unchallenged facts and circumstances arising under section 137 subsection 1D, also section 142 subsection 1 and 2 of the 1999 constitution and section 25 of the Electoral Act 2022. Number two, whether from the documentary evidence before the Honorable Court read and examined together with the unchallenged expert and technical evidence of the petitioner's witnesses, the petitioners proved that the non-compliance by INEC with the relevant provisions of the Electoral Act 2022 and the subsidiary legislations made thereunder substantially affected the outcome of the questioned presidential election held on the 25th February 2023. Number three, whether the declaration and returning of Tinubu by INEC as the winner of the presidential election held on the 25th February 2023 was not invalid for non-compliance with the provisions of the Electoral Act 2022 and by virtue of the mandatory provisions of Section 134, Subsection 2B of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended. So these are the major things they want the court to determine, not that these are the only reliefs they are seeking in their petition. Yes, what they want the court to determine is just based on the objections that INEC raised, which they addressed in this final address. So let's start with Shetima's double nomination, we skipped it the last time, and going by the arguments raised by the Labour Party on Shetima's double nomination, he still has a case to answer. Remember, this is quite different from that of the APM. Allied People's Movement are talking about invalid nomination of Tinubu, while Labour Party are talking about double nomination of Shetima. We will make an illustration like we did in that of the APM so that people will understand the differences. The arguments of the Labour Party are anchored in Section 142 of the 1999 Constitution and Section 35 of the Electoral Act 2022. Let's start with Section 142 of the Constitution which talks about the nomination and the election of the Vice President. Subsection 1 reads, In any election to which the foregoing provisions of this part of this chapter relate, a candidate for an election to the office of president shall not be deemed to be validly nominated unless he nominates another candidate as his associate from the same political party for his running for the office of president, who is to occupy the office of vice president and that candidate shall be deemed to have been duly elected to the office of vice president. If the candidate for an election to the office of president who nominated him as such associate is duly elected as president in accordance with the provisions aforesaid. Now, let's see the illustration. There are four dates in contention. Number one represents the day Shetima wrote the letter of withdrawal to APC. Number two is the date INEC claimed to have received the letter from APC. Number three is the day that Chetima was nominated as a vice presidential candidate of the APC. Number four is the date on the withdrawal form with INEC. 
So looking at all this, the Labour Party legal team are saying that it is Section 31 of the Electoral Act 2022 that determines the actual date of withdrawal of a candidate. Let's see Section 31. A candidate may withdraw his or her candidature by notice in writing signed by him and delivered personally by the candidate to the political party that nominated him for the election and the political party shall convey such withdrawal to the commission not later than 90 days to the election. So going by this section, it is the political party that submits the letter of withdrawal to INEC, not the candidate himself. So if that is true, that means the date the candidate submitted the withdrawal letter to his party is irrelevant because INEC is not yet aware. Let's assume he truly delivered that letter of withdrawal to his party on the 6th of July. Yes, that's one part. The second part is that he is still a candidate at INEC because INEC is not yet aware until his party converts the same letter to INEC and INEC finalizes the filing of documents. He is still the candidate in the said election and in this case Shetima, he still continues to be the candidate for Bono Central Senatorial District. So based on these arguments, the Labour Party legal team are saying that going by subsisting judgments of appeal court, the Supreme Court, a valid withdrawal according to the Electoral Act starts from the date that INEC is notified by the party. So in essence, the law doesn't recognize the date a candidate submitted the letter of withdrawal to his party. It starts counting from the time INEC received the letter. Because if they haven't received the letter, there's no way they are aware. They can't be aware that someone has withdrawn his candidacy. In fact, if they go into an election that way, that means the name of the person will be on the ballot. But if they are notified, you can now say that the person has successfully withdrawn his candidacy. The Labour Party legal team also told the court that the respondents cannot rely on the judgment of the Supreme Court on Shetima's double nomination. Because right from the High Court to the appeal to the Supreme Court, the decision of the different courts was based on lack of local standby by PDP. The courts never decided on the mentioned dates. So despite the respondents citing what Honorable Justice Okoro said in the judgment, the Labour Party legal team called it orbiter dictum, which is a simple legal term that means other things said or a judge said something in person. It's not in the main judgment. It was not part of the main decision that was made by the court. They went on to say that an orbiter dictum of the Supreme Court is not binding on the court. To support this claim, they cited Amade v. Swabara 2021, where the Supreme Court justices said the same thing. Also in Bamayi v. State 2001, the Supreme Court held, It follows in my respectful view that the introduction of Nnemekago JSC's observation in Kotoye's case was unnecessary for reaching a decision in the Mokolo's case. That also goes for the whole gamut of the observation of Ono JSC, which I think should be regarded as mere orbiter in the circumstances. The present appellant cannot rely and derive any benefit from the orbiter. So looking at all this, you can see the problem of INEC, a supposed neutral umpire showing their blatant partisanship. How can they be defending Tinubu and Shetima? Imagine saying that Shetima withdrew his nomination when he wrote the letter to the APC. How did they know about this? Are they part of APC? Without receiving the letter, they are not in the know. It's simple. When they haven't gotten a letter from APC, not just the letter, but other forms that should be filled to officially complete the process of withdrawal. And looking at the next judgment that LP Libgu team cited in order to support their argument, it will seem as if they indicted a justice of the Supreme Court. <laughs> indicted in quotes. Because Honorable Justice Emmanuel Aguin interpreted Section 31 of the Electoral Act when he was still at the Appeal Court. In the matter between Ebe and Etanje 2019, he held that the political party shall convey such withdrawal to the Commission that a candidate delivering a letter of withdrawal to his party must coexist with the party delivering same letter to the commission before there can be a valid withdrawal of a candidate. My people, they say Wahala is not the finish. It be like Coco Shoe, where woman 
we no sabi use a waka can go pull leg. He want to use a thing in press. You see this matter where I neck an APC collect by force from the good people of this country. Now shock, he shook them for next so. The day where they take that decision, where they do that together, they will never forget that day. And this one, now open high to everybody for this country. Peter will be, don't make way for us. And this one, now lesson to the election where go they take place for inside this country. How Peter will be, can't they give up boldness? That you get right to collect what it belongs to you, anyhow, anyway, if they take taken from you in a way where it's not clear. They could not leave an opinion for the comment session. Now, here yeah, we forgot the matter. Eh? Area, not till they happen. I thank you now for the supporters. I bet, Apple, subscribe to this channel if you see for the first time. Make you share. Respect.